There we go. We are now live. It's like opening the doors to the youth room, seeing how many kids will walk in. Just giving it a few minutes before we get started. AK Smith 12. Eli King. How you doing, buddy? Ashlyn. There's Mrs. Ewell. She is on Facebook Live. Hey, let me know if you can hear me on each one. Okay, Eli, you're doing good. Good. Sherry, can you hear me on Facebook? Can you hear me now? Can you hear me now? Can you hear me now? Stone Coconut. Sorry, Eli's name was right above yours. We can hear you. Good. That helps when we're doing this. Or that'd be, I don't know. Some of you probably can just hit mute and be like, oh, yeah, he thinks I watched. Uh, Sherry, can you hear me on Facebook? I hope so. How's your day been? Yes, there we go. Thank you, Sherry. Just want to make sure. How's your guys' day been? Anybody doing anything exciting? Rob a bank. Ash and D are here. We can hear. Well, yeah, because you're upstairs. I couldn't find my hat, so you guys got to deal with the baldness. Rub the head for good luck. Oh, we're just hanging out for a little bit. Incorrect. You don't get good luck, my. I know what you mean. Turning in my Bible. Oh, you guys are outside? Secretly Brett Carter. Secretly Brett Carter. Sorry, I can't even say that name out loud, can I? What's up, buddy? What's up, buddy? Dun, 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 dun. There we go. Definitely grab a Bible if you have one. We'll need one. We always do. I don't know if you saw it on... Instagram, but got a little bit of a surprise. Gonna try to play a little game. Um, <laughs> don't ask. And try to give away some pizza. We'll talk about it. So, anyway. Miss seeing you guys. I posted earlier. Raquel! Ah! Where in the heck are you at in this world? Have you made it home home or are you still flying flying? Leah Lane! I see you there. I see you there. No. I posted earlier, I took a picture of myself, I'm going stir crazy. Ashley said it best. She was talking to somebody. Honey, I miss you. She said, it feels like we're on house arrest. Imagine if somebody would just got off house arrest and this all went down and then they're back on house arrest. Like, this is even more reason why I never want to break the law because I'm in my own house going crazy. Imagine being in a prison. Oh, that's a no for me, dog. I miss you. My! My, are you home? Are you speaking the Swedish language? Eating Swedish pancakes? Whatever else. I don't know. Sorry, that's all I got. She says, yes. Are you glad to be home? See your mama. For those of you who didn't know, we had two foreign exchange students that had to go home early back to Norway and Sweden because of the whole pandemic. So 
Um, very sad, but was very blessed by getting to know them and having them a part of our group, our ministry. And the people they stayed with weren't bad either. We kind of like those guys too, so I guess we'll let it slide. It feels weird because usually when I'm waiting for youth group to start, I have music playing in the youth room, and I don't have music right now. Maybe next week I'll pump the jams, get a radio in here or something. So I texted today. I tried to text everybody, Stephanie Madison. You're a little outside the age range, but we'll allow it. I'm just teasing. More the merrier, more than welcome. I've always said parents are more than welcome to come up to the youth room anytime. So come on in. But I had texted every student that I had numbers to. Um, and yeah, my phone was blowing up today. So Mikey Yule, what's up, buddy? 531. Well, hey, let me explain what we're going to do. And hopefully, well, let's give a couple more minutes because they all thought 530. So maybe like here in four or five minutes, we'll get started. Not D. Oh, I didn't text D. I think he was getting plenty of text messages on his own. And we're not going to name anything by that. Reset Student Ministry, sup, sup. Who's commenting on Facebook as Reset? Who is that? Is that you, Ashley? Because I don't know who says sup, sup anymore. No, I'm just teasing. All right, real truth, transparent moment. When I was like, I think seventh grade, and we used to write notes to each other. And Chesney wasn't me. Uh huh. I believe you. We used to write notes, and we'd fold them up, and then you'd pass each other in the hall, and you'd have to hand off your note. Then you had to try to read your note. Me, the old man. Ah, oh, Mikey. And so uh, you'd pass notes to each other, and then when you're in class, you had to try to read the note, respond, fold it back up. Um, and get it back to the person. Well, I received a note from a girl. A, you know, one note. It wasn't anything. And it, she was actually writing me on behalf of a friend. Because you, know, you never talk directly to the person that you like. So she was on behalf of her friend. And I was on behalf. So it was like my friend and her friend. Yeah, anyway, so she wrote me a note, long story short. And so I unfold it. And the first thing it says is, sup. And then she went on with the note. Well, I didn't know what that meant. I thought. You don't know how to spell soup right. And even if you did, I don't know why you called me soup. So that's when I learned what sup meant. I, I guess I just thought, what's wrong with saying what's up? But that's just me. <laughs> I don't know how, but I am not very techy. <laughs> hey, Veronica, how are you? Canito Maxino! Sorry. I'm telling you, I'm going stir crazy. It, it's been a rough three days. And Ashley's like, it's only been two. <sighs> the saying. I think that's why Jesus rose from the dead in three days. Four days, he's like, I've had enough of this place. I got to get out of here. Feeling the pain. I'm about to put the hazmat suit on and go to the mall. Rock it if you got it, man. Uh-oh, I, I hear the basement door open. Somebody's walking down. <laughs> Here's the Hi, wife. Friends. Oh, my goodness. Okay, Hold now up. I'm leaving. I don't think they heard you in that decibel. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if you heard that, but she mocked me on her way out. <laughs> anyway. All right, hey, we're going to play a game. We're going to play a game called 20 Questions. I'm going to read a question. The first person that can respond with the correct answer gets the point. And after 20 questions, whoever has the most right, I will order you a pizza and a two liter and have it delivered to your house. You'll just have to DM me uh, what type of pizza you want, what type of pop you want, and your address. So we got a pizza on the line here. Okay, pizza. Pizza. Now, if you live somewhere they don't deliver pizza, 
I will get a pizza to you somehow, some way. Maybe borrow a drone, I'll fly it in. So I'm gonna ask you a question and you gotta answer. So we need some interaction. So be ready to text, however that is. So if you need to get ready, get ready. And it's the first correct answer and I'm looking both at Facebook and Instagram. They're right here side by side. Any questions before we start the game? Pepperoni and Diet Dr. Pepper. You ain't gonna win. Kayla Bruce. I don't know who you are. I know a Kayla Weiss. I don't know a Kayla Bruce. I'm just teasing. All right. Here we go. Question number one. What is the total amount of players in an ice hockey game? What is the total amount of players in an ice hockey game? Both teams on the ice at one time. Go. What happened to video? We don't have video? Canito Maxito. Don't don't do that to me. Twelve. Leah Lane. Twenty-six? Have you ever watched a hockey game? Goodness. Twelve is the correct answer. Some that is my cue. All right, hold on real quick. Instagram, can you see me? Ashlyn Yule, 12. We're giving it to Ashlyn because she's a student. Ashlyn Yule with one point. Instagram land, what is the question? The question was, what is the number of players in an ice hockey game on the ice at one time? 14, you were close, Veronica. Leah Lane, no. Sorry, Mikey. All right, question number two. Which is the oldest tennis tournament? Instagram is delayed. Uh-oh. Which is the oldest tennis tournament in the world? Oldest tennis tournament in the world. Oldest tennis <laughs> Instagram losers. <laughs> Sorry, that was my cue. What is the oldest tennis tournament in the world? Any takers? Any takers? 1953. No, the name of the tournament. Wimbledon. We'll give it to Mike. All right, Mike, we'll give it. Ah, oh, Ken Maxey switched over, didn't you? Wimbledon, Ashland. I think you guys are sitting next to each other. Question number three. Here we go. Trying this out. What is the height of a basketball hoop in feet? Four. No, Brett Carter. What is the height of a basketball hoop in feet? Instagram is very delayed. Stinks. Ten feet D cash. My wife got that one. She heard what we were doing. Chesney, you were right. Ten feet. Very good, guys. Very good. All right. Question number four. What is the total number of bases on a baseball field? Total number of bases on a baseball field. Total number of bases on a baseball field. Da -dum -ba -boom. Total number of bases on the baseball field. Total. Ashley Nicole, you're right. Four. Very good. Chesney, you're just like a hair behind her. Just be a little quicker on the draw. Quicker on the draw. All right, now that was out of our sports. Good job, Leah. You got it right. Ashlyn, no, it's three. It's not three. It's four. You count home base. Come on. Here we go. All right, now that is out of the sports categories. Now we're going into movies. What is the favorite food of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles? What's up, Jacqueline? She changed your answer. <laughs> oh, what's going on? Hey, we're doing a game, 20 questions. Whoever can get the most right, I'm going to send you a pizza. Home plate is not a base. Cry me a river. <laughs> oh, Ken Maxey even said that. He knows more about bases. 
But if you don't touch that, pizza, very good, Ashlyn, pizza. Ashlyn Ford, pizza, very good. All right. Evan guessed pizza. He is right. All right, here we go. Another movie category. In the Disney movie Aladdin, Abu is what animal? What animal is Abu? What animal is Abu in the movie Aladdin? Monkey! Man. Ashlyn Yule is winning the Instagram. And then uh, Mikey Yule is winning the Facebook. Another movie. Name the Disney movie, which features a little girl having five distinct emotions. Sadness, joy, disgust, fear, and anger. Why did you say Aladdin, Ashley? Don't ask. What Disney movie features a little girl having five distinct emotions? Sadness, joy, disgust, fear. Leah Lane, inside out. Very good. Leah, you got a point on the board. Point on the board. Very good. Ford, you were right there. Good job. Uh, question number eight. What kind of animal is Sid in Ice Age? What kind of animal is Sid in Ice Age? Movie Ice Age. Sid is a sloth. Leah Lane. Here we go. Question number nine. Funny one. Who plays the lead character in Mean Girls? I want the actress's name. I even gave it away that it was a girl. Who plays the lead character in Mean Girls? What's up, Grady? All right, playing 20 questions. However many you get right, whoever gets the most right, I'm sending you a <laughs> Evan Guest, Willie Mammoth. Close, buddy. Lindsay Lohan. Ashley got that one. Very good. We're playing 20 questions. Whoever gets the most right, I'm sending you a pizza. Uh, and because... Uh, live stream of Instagram and Facebook are off. We might just be generous and send to very good. Evan guess Lindsay Lohan. Good job. Here we go. <laughs> yeah, I don't worry about spelling. You're okay. Who was the first character to speak in star Wars? Who is the first character to speak in Star Wars? What's up, Haley Madison? Playing 20 questions, get as many right. I'll send you a pizza. We'll probably send one out. Chewbacca, negative. That's my Chewbacca right there. Absolutely horrible. Yoda, negative. CP330, depends on what movie. Good job, Joe Huber, you're right. We're going with C3PO. And that is Ashlyn Yule on that side. And over here, Mikey. All right. I love how you typed out three. I could have got, uh, got it. Evan Guest, not my father. <laughs> I hear question. Now we're going into the music category. So we've done sports. We've done movies. Now we're going into music. I definitely do not know the answer to this question. Here we go. You ready for it? Get ready for it. You're going to love it. Name the artist who rejoined the band, the Backstreet Boys, in 2012. I don't know if I've ever heard a Backstreet Boys song from the very beginning to the very end um, because they don't make enough Tylenol for that. Anybody know who was the artist that rejoined the Backstreet Boys in 2012? 
What's up, Hannah? Playing 20 questions. Whoever gets the most right gets pizza. We'll have it delivered to you and a pop. Probably going to send out two because Instagram and Facebook aren't synced perfectly. So whatever you're playing on, whatever format you're on, stay on it. Justin Timberlake, nope. Donnie, nope. Can't just keep guessing there, Mikey. Kevin, Kevin! Chesney with the win! Ches, great job. I didn't even know who that person was at all. So, yes, Kevin Scott Richardson. Backstreet Boys. Question number 12, name the band that sang the song Hotel California. Who sang the song Hotel California? Playing 20 questions. We got a pizza and a pop online. Who sang? The Eagles, Hannah Madison. Good job. Very proud of you, actually, for knowing that. Very, very, very proud. Brett Carter, I thought that would have been you, man. I don't know where you were at on that, boss. All right, here we go. Question number 13, get ready. Why, and remember, this is music category, music category. Why is February 6th, 6th a national holiday in Jamaica? Riyaman. It's a Jamaica. What is a Jamaican bobsled team? Good job, Evan. I got you down guessing the Eagles, brother. I got you down. Why is February 6th a national holiday in Jamaica? And we are in the music category. What's up, Glenda? Playing 20 questions. Okay, what about Bob Marley? For Bob Marley? Yeah, why? Why would February 6th be so important to Bob Marley? Birthday! Absolutely, it's his birthday, February 6th, Bob Marley's birthday. In case you were wondering to celebrate, I see you, Mike, over there on Facebook. I got you down. All right. Now we're moving into history. Oh, I'm teasing. Chase Forward would love it. Birth, duh. I heard Ashley just shush all the kids upstairs. <laughs> she is taking this serious. When there is pizza on the line, my girl's serious. Let me tell you, my girl is serious. Bob Marley's birthday. Good job, Evan. All right, here we go. Question number 14 in the history category. What is the birthplace of Napoleon Bonaparte? Give me the country. I don't care about the city. Napoleon is from what country? What's up, Chris King, Jana? Playing 20 questions. Whoever gets the most right, we're going to send a, no Germany. No to the Germany. We'll send a pizza to whoever has the most. Brett Carter. Brett Carter. Got it. France. Oh, Dayton's on Instagram. Okay, I got gotcha. you. Good to know. Good to know. FYI, I'm not playing on Instagram. My son doesn't have social. That's okay. All right, here we go. One more history one. Bear with me. Checkers. Checkers. King me. Right? Checkers were invented in which country? Checkers invented in which country? No, not Germany. Iraq, negative, Grady. Germany, nope. Iraq. <laughs> not England, not Iraq, not Austria. All right, here's your clue. That was your clue. Egypt. Chesney Stone got it. Am I going to guess it on Facebook land? Oh, yeah, of course, Mike Ewell. Chesney got it. It was Egypt. Let my people go and king me. I don't know if those could go together, but it sounded cool. All right, coming to the last few questions. It really is a tight race. Like, everybody just has a few. So uh, I got a couple. <laughs> Czech <laughs> Czechoslovakia. Canito Maxito. Czechoslovakia. All right, here we go. Going into category category of books. 
Paddington Bear belongs to which country? Paddington Bear. You know, corduroy jacket, Paddington Bear. Peru! Very good. D Money got it. D Money got it on Insta. Melissa Smith, what's up? Way to go, Chesney, says Glenda King. No, he's not from England. He is from Peru, actually. Peru is the correct answer. Everybody's guessing England. I would have thought that, too, because he kind of has that accent, but he, it's actually Peru. Sorry, people are texting me as we're doing this. Question number 17. Who is the author of the famous novel Pride and Prejudice? Who is the author of Pride and Prejudice? Pride and Prejudice. Answer that question before you run. <laughs> I promise you he does not have them. Jane Austen, very good. Da, 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 da. Jane Austen. Jane Austen. Austin Jane, as some people like to put it. Very good, very good. Hey, you guys know your uh, know your uh, classic literature. I'm kind of proud right now. She didn't spell it right. Oh, man. <laughs> We're going to get in a fight over spelling. I'm not Alex Trebek here. <laughs> Ken, Satan or Jane Austen? It's one and the same, buddy. One and the same. Question number 18. This is books. What is the name of the wizard in The Hobbit? You shall not pass. Gandalf. Very good. I should have made it more specific, so you had to tell me if he was Gandalf the Grey or Gandalf the White. Question number 19. Must be lagging for you, Ashlyn. Sorry. Um, all right. She answered way before you asked. How... There's no way she could answer it before she. I asked it. She's, she's not reading my mind here. I promise. He's not listening from the other room. And if he is, I'll beat him. How about that? Video froze. Uh oh. Is video you are answering before the question is over? I'm not like tech tech savvy. <laughs> See, I'm not the only one. All right, if Dayton's cheating, this is what we'll do. The next time we're all back together, I'll tie him up, and you guys can all punch him as hard as you can in the arm, okay? Am I still frozen on Facebook? What's up, Haley? He's cheating. <laughs> oh, shut up, Nick. Video froze. Trying to see if the video's froze before I go on. Or you can buy us all pizza. <laughs> it's just delayed. Sorry. All right, well, let's get our last few questions out. And, and Dr. Seuss, I'm whispering so Dayton can't hear me. Because some of you think that's happening. In Dr. Seuss, who steals Christmas? You're right, Ashlyn. Good job. Good job. <laughs> Grady, I don't know who Gronch is. Sorry, buddy. Who? <laughs> cheating. What? What's cheating, Dayton? Okay. Question number twenty. It's random. No category. Ready? What is the old-fashioned name for a tomato? What's an old-fashioned name for a tomato?
Anybody know? I say tomato, you say tomato, let's call the whole thing off. What is an old fashioned name for a tomato? Any guesses? <laughs> that, that is a guess. No, they called it something else. A wolf apple, you're close. <laughs> Grady, I'm not pronouncing that over live Instagram. I will get slapped. What? Uh, Craig Williams is close. At least he might be right, but what I have is, is something else. It is a love apple. Somebody's using their Siri. That's what they called an old fashioned name for a tomato, a love apple. Hey, you learned something today. And tiebreaker if needed. Let's see. Let's, uh, let's add them up here. I got Evan with four. Good job, Evan. Leah with two. No, they didn't call it potato. Two. Uh, we got D Money with four. We got Mike with five. Ashlyn with five. Cheating again. I'm Hannah. Okay, hi, Hannah. I just saw your dad's name, so I was going with that. Um, Chesney's got two. Hannah's got one. Brett Carter's got one. Let's go into a massive tiebreaker. What did ancient Romans use to dye their hair? Ancient Romans, what did they use to dye their hair? I demand a recount. This ain't Florida, buddy. Yules always cheat. <laughs> you can't trust them. Someone's going to get a beat down. Ashley, I don't know if you want Dayton to be on your social saying all this. The blood of their victims. <laughs> Logan Corkins. Poop. Be more specific. Berries, henna, be more specific. It is a type of excrement, but from which animal? Bird droppings, that is it. It's nasty. All right, I'll count them up. We'll get a count out there. Donkey. Oh, I thought the bird poop was bad enough. Could you imagine going around grabbing a donkey and being like, all right, <sighs> couldn't do it. Hey, that is 20 questions. Let's get into our Bible study. If you have your Bibles, open up to James. We've been walking through the book of James. We did last week video-wise. We're going to do it this week. Just try to play a game, shake it up a little bit. I'll do a count again, get our winner out there. And if anything, maybe we'll just all have a massive pizza party. When all this craziness is lifted. So, James chapter 1. Last week we talked about count it all joy, my brothers, when you meet various trials of many kinds or various, or meet trials of various kinds, however your version wants to say it. I have it memorized in one and I read out of another. What a wretched man I am. So I always get it wrong. So last week we talked about trials and then we're just going to continue on verse 5. Actually, let's pray before we get jumping into the Word. Father, we love you. We trust you. We just thank you for this time that we can be together, even if it's over uh, Instagram and Facebook. Just lead us in our study in the book of James. Um, just be with everyone. Keep them safe. And uh, those that are sick and those that are treating the sick, just be with them, Lord. Father, we love you. We pray this in your name. Amen. So James chapter 1, verse 5, if any of you, if any of you lack wisdom, let him ask God who gives generously to all without reproach, and it, and it will be given him. But let him ask in faith without doubting. For the one who doubts is like a wave of the sea that is driven and tossed by the wind. For that person must not suppose that he will receive anything from the Lord. He is double-minded unstable in all his ways. James chapter 1, verses 5 to 8. That's where we're going to camp out today, talking about wisdom. And so last week we talked about trials and how um, 
you know, God is using trials. God doesn't tempt us. He doesn't tempt us to do evil. He gives us trials to do what is good. So he might put us in a dangerous situation so that we have courage. He may put us in a, a trying situation so that we will have patience. But temptations are always to make you do evil. Trials are always to make you do good. Easy way to define the two. And when you're in the middle of trials, that's the best time that we need wisdom to understand, okay, Lord, what do you want me to do? How do we respond accordingly uh, because of the trial that we're in? And who better to ask than the author of this trial that is uh, having us walk through this trial and seek the Lord, you know? So you might be in a trial of, uh, should I stay at this place of employment or should I leave? Should I, you know, that will always be met with certain trials, how we should respond to people. Um, whatever. And but how do we respond accordingly? We need wisdom. And wisdom, we're not talking about just like head knowledge. We're not trying to make the cranium get bigger, but how to use this knowledge. So we're not just talking about knowing what is right, but how to use it. And so look what he says in verse five. But if any of you lack wisdom, let them ask of God. So you can't earn more wisdom. You can't collect more wisdom right? It's not like you're Super Mario Brothers and you're just collecting more lives, more wisdom. You can't earn it. You can't buy it. You can't make it rain enough to get more wisdom. You can't demand it from God. You shall give me wisdom. You have to ask. And I think God designed it that way because there's humility in that. To be able to come to God and say, you know what? I, I don't know what's going on in this situation. And, and humbly I ask, what should I do? Also, with humility, there's the dependence to depend on God for it. Because if we always knew um, even how to get wisdom on our own and whatever it was, or if we always knew what to do, what would we need God for? Why would we meet, need to be dependent upon God? And so uh, we come and we ask. We don't earn it. We don't buy it. We don't demand it. We don't collect it. We ask it. So in humility and full reliance and depending on God, we ask him for wisdom. And the other thing about it is look at who we are asking. It's when we need wisdom, we're not running um, to uh, self-help books. We're not running to celebrities. We're not running to different conferences. And honestly, um, even me as a pastor, I don't want to be the first person that you come to when you're in a situation because normally the first question out of my mouth is how do you feel like the Lord is leading you well I haven't talked to the Lord about that yet don't don't let me or any other pastor be the first person that you run to but look at who we ask so if any of you lacks wisdom let him ask in humility dependence let him ask God that's who we run to for this I mean if he's the the author of our lives he's the author of this trial he is all and complete in wisdom who better to ask and then verse 6 tells us the manner in which it so it says if anyone lacks lacks wisdom let him ask god and god gives generously to all without reproach um he's not going to hold he knows the worst things about me but he's not going to hold that against me he's not going to say oh i know what you did last week i'm a withholding wisdom or um, I know what you're going to do in five days. If God's omniscient, he knows everything. He knows what I'm going to be doing next week and, and what sin I'm going to fall to. And he could be like, oh, why, do, why should I give you wisdom? Because I know how you're just going to misuse it or not even use it. He, he, he's not like that. Without reproach, it will be given to him. But let him ask in faith. So how? We ask. We don't demand. We don't buy. We don't earn it. And who do we run to? We run to God for it, but the manner in which we ask in faith. Hebrews eleven six says it's impossible to please God without faith. Faith, trusting the things uh, that sometimes don't make sense, that we don't understand the answers, and is to step out in faith, believing, uh, believing who God is, believing his powers, believing his promises. But allow him, but let him ask in faith with no doubting. For the one who doubts is like the wave of the sea that is driven and tossed by the wind. <clears throat> so here James talks about somebody that's doubting in a wave of the sea, and he kind of puts them together. And so here's the analogy, you know, because the doubter, they'll, 
they'll rise in hope and then they fall in despair. They rise in hope and then they fall when something happens. And he says, don't be like that. Don't be unstable like that, where your life is just like this. Now, the trials that you go through, your life could be like this. You know, life's going really well and all of a sudden something bad happens. Your life can be like that. But for the Christian who has wisdom that understands these trials, steady, smooth, rolling through it. And that's, and we all kind of know people like that. We can, let's be honest. And I'm like that even at sometimes. Something external happens in my life. My emotions are way up here. Then they fall. And I think of Paul. That's what he was talking about when he said, I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength, Philippians 4, 13. Because the verse is right above it. He says, I know how to be in abundance and I know how to be in need. I know how to be. And he was given all these kind of opposites. And he learned the secret to contentment. Is I can do all things through Christ. And so regardless of what's happening in my life, he was staying stable in his ways. He wasn't unstable, meaning he wasn't letting his external situations drive his life. Now, will they affect our lives? Absolutely. And our emotions, but we can't let our, our emotions and these external situations drive our life. They don't need to be in the driver's seat. They don't even need to be in the passenger seat. They need to be in the back seat, right? And here's the other issue is a lot of times we think we're in the driver's seat. Mm -mm. Jesus, take the wheel. You get in the passenger seat. Let Christ drive. But a doubter rises in hope, falls, sinks in despair, and just unstable in all his ways. Let me say it like this. If you're unstable in faith, if you're unstable in this one thing, you're unstable in all things. You know, for me, I try to keep priorities in my life this way. And we've talked about this many, many, many times. God, family, ministry, and school. I'm still in school, so I try to keep it like that. And even to break it down more, you know, God, my relationship with my wife, my relationship with my kids, ministry, and then school. And when I get those priorities out of whack in any way, I'm unstable. So even though ministry's still here, family's still here, but I moved school up, anytime I get unstable in that, it just doesn't mess up the one thing that I became unstable in. It messes everything up. So when I put something before God, everything's out of whack. When I put something above my family that shouldn't be there, completely out of whack. When I put something that even above school that should even be below that, completely out of whack, and I become unstable. And so in our faith, when we are lacking this wisdom of, Lord, what are, you, what are you calling me to do? How would you want me to respond in this? I encourage you to respond in faith, trusting, believing, regardless of the external situations. Our joy comes from the Lord. It's an internal thing. Because, see, a lot of times when we hit those trials, we pray for the removal of those trials. It's, it's, it's a knee-jerk reaction. It's kind of like when you touch the stove and it's hot, you, you, know, you don't think about, oh, my hand is burning. I should remove that. It's a knee-jerk reaction. You just pull your hand back. And so in the same way, the moment that our lives become uncomfortable, it's, it's almost reactionary to want that to stop. But instead, seek wisdom to make the right use of it. So instead of, oh, I just wish this would stop, Lord, what do you want to do in and through me during this season? So right now, all of us are on house arrest. We're like Paul at the end of the book of Acts. House arrest, we can't go anywhere. This is the closest to seeing people we get. And we're on house arrest. And we all just want it to end. I'm in that same boat. It's like day three. And it's caused me to start drinking. It's water. And we all just want it to end, and that's, but instead, should our prayer be, Lord, what do you want to do this time that I have all kinds of time on my hands? Uh, I texted every student that I could, asking them, just checking up on them. Hey, how's everything going? Top answer, number one answer. Anybody want to guess? I'm bored. I'm bored. There's nothing to do. And I totally get it. Like, totally get it. It's funny seeing what everybody's been doing 
um, all the little side projects that they've never had time for, now they have time for. And think about all those times that God has been trying to speak into our lives and, and or we've been challenged by maybe either me or our small group leaders or even big church, we get challenged by something and, and our knee-jerk reaction is, oh, I don't have the time for it. I'm just going to go out on a limb. By and far, the majority, we all have time for it now. And I say, okay, Lord, what do you want to do in my life? You've, you have literally calmed the whole world, at least our whole country. I got nothing but time now. And we are trying to put tons of resources out there. If you didn't get a chance to watch uh, Spring Challenge, go to our YouTube page, Reset Student Ministries, watch those. Maybe you watch them, rewatch them again. Um, we have devotionals out there every other day. I'm trying to do videos like this. We have Sunday School went up. Um, all kinds of material and resources. There's Version, the Bible app with its uh, Bible reading plans and devotions. There's Right Now Media all kinds of free resources and, and how and that can be used to help grow your faith. But the question is, it's not a knowledge of knowing that all these things are there, but the wisdom to say, okay, what am I going to do with the time that God has given me, the resources that have been made available to me? Am I going to open up my heart and allow God to move and work in my life in this season? I think that's a very real question for all of us. So we need to seek wisdom because it's, it is hard and it's always going to be through the lens of our relationship with Christ. And it's crazy to think about, you know, when you look back in the old Testament and when they would um, have a decision before them and they were trying to seek wisdom and they would go to the priest with, with this, Hey, I don't know what to do. Can, can you on behalf of me inquire to the Lord as what I should do? And they had this thing called the, the Urim and the Thummim. It was this little pouch, and he had two stones in it, a, a, pretty much a black one and a white one. And so you would ask them. Uh, there was the question. They would come before the Lord, Lord, what should this person do? And they'd pull out one of the stones, and it would, and that's how they would guide and direct them. And that's how you sought wisdom. But think now we get to seek Christ. And, and that mystery, as Colossians talks about, we, we get to seek Christ, and, and the Holy Spirit indwells us. We don't have to run far if we want wisdom, that God is very near to us. We just have to seek him. And so I challenge you, seek wisdom in your life. And even in this season, right now, right now, as it's Wednesday and we're still on lockdown, all kinds of time, instead of Netflixing or, or Instagramming uh, or Facebooking or Netflix binging or whatever it is, what? and I'm not saying you have to take – you know, every waking moment, you got to be doing it, some sort of uh, Bible study, something like that. But what if you really did sit down and intentionally dug deep into the word and into any kind of resource? And if you have nowhere, if you have no idea where to start, hit me up. Um, and, and I got more resources than I know what to do with them, to be very honest. And I would love to come alongside you and, and we'll do them with you. Just let me know. Uh, one other thing I want to say about seeking wisdom. Um, you know, uh, we've been getting a lot of questions, and we do every year, seniors that are graduating or somebody that has a situation, hey, what should I do? Um, and so how do you seek wisdom? It sounds almost like one of these Christianese uh, kind of things. You have, oh, just seek the Lord and seek wisdom. And, you know, you read Proverbs, and it's personified as a woman, and it's just like it, it's kind of confusing at times. But to seek wisdom, kind of three, uh, three thoughts here. Uh, seek godly wisdom. Seek godly counsel. So when I said earlier, you know, it's okay to uh, reach out to a pastor. Just don't let them be the first one. I would say seek God first. Um, but it's okay to ask, you know, your parents or a small group leader, ask me or another pastor and say, hey, this is what's going on in my life. Life, What do you think I should do? And, and, and listen to that godly wisdom. You know, it, it means nothing if we share that and we just go away with it and we do nothing. Um, but seek godly wisdom. Number two, his word. And not, not just like, okay, Lord. Um, I, should I move to California or Florida and ascribe to the Lord? O heavenly beings ascribe to the glory and strength. Like, you know, you can't ask a yes or no question to God and open up the Bible and expect to get an answer. But let me put it this way and you'll understand. Have you ever heard preaching or teaching maybe by me, another pastor, whatever. And it feels like the pastor's talking directly to you and everything that he's saying is like, there's a situation in your life and it's like, how does he know about this? 
And I will promise you, like, I don't do that. If I know something going on in your life, I just try to make my sermons applicable, but not about any of anybody, but just applicable to teenagers. But when we feel like a pastor speaking to us, that's God speaking to us. And, and he's trying to reveal himself through his word to us in that. So seek godly counsel, godly wisdom, seek his word, the preaching and teaching of his word. And then here's the other thing. You have the Holy Spirit inside of you. And ask, if we are asking in faith, God will reveal it to your heart. It's one of those things that it's hard to describe. It's more of those that you'll just experience one day. You know, when people ask, uh, like one of the questions to Tim and Beck Montgomery, well, how do you know you were supposed to be a missionary? You're supposed to go to Ecuador. Or when people ask me, how did you know you were supposed to be a pastor? I just did. Like, I just I just knew that's what God was telling me. He, he was putting that on my heart. And we even use that phrase, oh, you know, I, I tell other people, I'll text them and, hey, how are you doing? God laid you on my heart. And that can sound weird, but it's just, but it's true though. He just, you just know when God lays that on your heart, you know what it is. So seek godly wisdom, his word, but seek him and, and ask the Lord to lay that heavy on your heart. Because if that's something God wants you to do, uh, he will reveal it to you. He's not, he's not trying to keep back everything and say, oh, I'll just figure it out on your own. But again, it goes back to the top of what you're talking about. He wants you to ask. He wants you to come to him in humility and dependence. And it's part of that relationship with him. And he wants you to have faith in him and belief and to trust and to yield your life to him. So um, if, any, if any of us lack wisdom, just ask God. And that's you, you don't need to come to me. Just, just go to the Father. Just go to the Father. Hey, let me pray for you. But real quick, at 6.30... We are having our all-church prayer and worship night. It's going to be on Facebook Live on Grace Evangelicals Facebook page. Facebook Live, it's on our live stream, and I believe it's going to be on YouTube Live. Um, we got two of our very own students giving their testimony. Uh, Michael Dykus is doing worship. We are praying for families. Um, so as we get off of here, I encourage you to switch over, go to Grace uh, you can go to graceontheweb.org. You can find the live stream there or go to Grace Evangelical Church on our Facebook. Um, and you can watch it there. Um, but yeah, it was supposed to be a student ministry led prayer and worship night. We get the one that, you know, during the pandemic, uh, which is awesome. Um, but we were able to try to do it all video. Um, so just in a sense to number one, it's good for all of us to pray and worship. We're right in the middle of a trial here. Uh, prayer is what we need. Uh, number two, to support our fellow student ministries. Um, and so I encourage you um, to be a part of that. But let's pray and we'll get out of here. Lord, we do love you. We trust you. We thank you for your word. That when we do lack wisdom and have no idea what to do with our lives, that you are very real and very present and available. That we can come to you. And you are near us, Lord. And all we need to do is reach out to you and seek you. And I pray that each and every one of us would do that. Uh, regardless of the trials in our lives, uh, regardless of the circumstances, whatever it is, but daily we'd reach out to you, Lord, and be in relationship with you. So that when those trials do happen and we need wisdom to understand what to do, um, you're very present to us, Lord. So continue to work and move in and through us. Open up our eyes and our ears uh, to the words that you had for us tonight. Um, and I pray, Lord, that I, as you pour out your Holy Spirit on us, that we would make use of the time that we have available to grow in our walk and our journey with you. Pray all this in the name of Jesus. Amen. Love you guys. Hope all is well. I'll count out some numbers here. Oh, look, Sarah and David Montgomery joined. Dave Burtis, love you guys. Higdon, Sherry, Yule 68. I see you. I see you there. Anyway, hey, James, so uh, next week we'll be starting in verse 9. So if you want to read ahead, um, feel free to. Um, I'll try to have a Sunday school lesson up. Um, and that'll be available Sunday after our normal service airs. But yeah, here in 10 minutes, all church prayer and worship. Um, and so uh, we're thinking about maybe doing a Zoom, if you know what Zoom is. Um, tomorrow. So we'll, we'll try to get some info out about that. And last but not least, guys, I'm available. I am bored out of my mind as well, doing school just like the rest of you. If you just want to talk, 
about nothing or anything, just, hey, I'm available. Just just know that um, a call away, a text, smoke signal, a pigeon carrier. What are other ways that they used to communicate back in the olden days? And, and, um, and we can still practice social distancing. What could that be? Anyway, all right. Until we meet again, signing off.